semester of uh, a month on January 9th, a Wednesday of 2019, Richard Lighthouse. Um, I am just so ecstatic to be able to have him on the show today for him to be able to go over his uh, slides and talk about the, the interesting number of books that he has and the interesting number of uh, ways that uh, the targeted individual and the technologies that are being used on uh, the, the society as a whole, and not just here, but around the United States, around the planet. So uh, enough of me being said. I'm, I'm going to try to just keep this as simple as me and let him do as much talking as he can. And uh, Richard, are you there? Yes, I am. Good afternoon, Wayne. Thanks for uh, having me on your show. You also, and uh, thank you for coming on, and, and thank you for the books that you've wrote and uh, 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 all the, the work that you've done in the past on exposing the truths of uh, 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 this being not, uh, this being a fact and something that uh, our military and the fusion centers and our government has been using against us. Could you go into a little bit about what you want to talk about with the viewers today? I'm going to just let you go ahead and take it over. We're going to have the slides as you go ahead and talk. We're going to put those on as you go. So, hey, go for it, my friend. Okay, thank you, Wayne. Um, this, this, uh, the story that I'd like to tell uh, folks today is actually got a long history uh, with it, and th there's a number of individuals that uh, started this movement or this uh, transparency movement to uncover uh, this government corruption and and it it runs very deep and and there's a long history behind it. Um, Dr. John Hall is probably one of the most famous uh, participants in the TI community, uh, but there were a number of folks that preceded him, including Bob Fletcher and um, um, a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Ger uh, Gerald Hall, Gerald Holland, and uh, he's in Philadelphia, I believe. And this goes back to at least the 1980s and, and possibly even longer. But uh, uh, Dr. Hall's book um, starts out with uh, satellite terrorism in America, and he's able to kind of outline many of the things that are going on. Um, but unfortunately, it's, it was only until recently that we're able to document specific locations, uh, personnel that are involved at the government level, and uh, some of the details of the technology that's being used. And that's a huge step forward uh, because that's something that we haven't been able to do um, uh, in the TI community for more than 30 years. And of course, what's critical about that is you can't file a lawsuit and just blame the US government. There's gotta be somebody on the other end of that lawsuit as a defendant. And you've got to have strong, solid evidence to back it up. And so um, I think what we've done during 2018 with a number of the uh, TI community uh, websites and leadership groups, uh, such as targetedjustice.com, uh, PAX International, um, um, Freedom for Targeted Individuals, uh, there's, there's a large number of them and, and you can find them on my website at rlighthouse.com. I should mention that all of the eBooks for targeted individuals on my website are free. Um, I encourage you to uh, download them. Um, uh, I, I also have a, a number of books on technical subjects, uh, but that's, uh, that's really not part of our discussion today. So one of the things that I'd like to emphasize starting off is there is a great deal of disinformation in the TI community. And, and that's very deliberate on the part of the CIA. And, and in my opinion, the CIA really runs this show from the highest levels of government. Um, there are many high ranking government officials that are involved with this, that have full knowledge of it, uh, that uh, continue to fund it from one year to the next. And the amounts that go into this uh, targeted individual program run into the many billions, many, many billions. And this has been going on for many, many years. It's, it's disturbing on many levels that our government and individual government employees would be willing to uh, stoop to the level of torture, literal torture on a daily basis for more than a million people worldwide. 
Um, I've uh, recently written a book called uh, Targeted Individuals Estimated Numbers. And the best estimate that I can provide is about 170,000 adults in the United States are currently being targeted as targeted individuals. And many in that group, unfortunately, are not even aware of the program. Um, they're told by their doctors that uh, they're hearing voices in their heads and that they're just delusional and that they need to take strong doses of medicine and that, and that, that will solve the problem. And, and unbeknownst to both the victim and the doctor is it's, it's part of a very sophisticated uh, CIA program that extends from the days of MK MKUltra. Um, the uh, Frank Church, a senator from the 1970s, uh, uh, tried to shut these programs down, illegal programs by the CIA down. Uh, if you're interested, you can find that on the internet, the church committee hearings of 1975. They were blockbusters, and um, Senator Church did his best to shut these down. Unfortunately, the CIA just moved the location, changed the names, and kept doing what they wanted to do. Um, and that's, that's part of the reason I advocate the abolishment of the CIA organi organization. And I think as this comes to greater light, I think this will go a long way in seeing that the CIA is shut down permanently and all of those employees um, scattered, retired, or, or put on um, permanent leave. Um, th those employees are culpable. The ones that willingly participate should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. There is nothing in the U.S. Constitution that gives the CIA, the Air Force Space Command, the Department of Homeland Security any right to conduct the criminal activities and operations that have been going on. It is disturbing on so many levels. So with that brief introduction, let me try to provide some of the details. Um, I recently published a book called The Governors of Gang Stalking, which identified for the first time two key top executives in the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, they are literally two steps away from President Trump. Um, their names are David Glaw and Brian Murphy, and uh, you will find their, the detailed information about them in this book, or I encourage you to visit the uh, DHS website at dhs.gov, and you can find these people for yourself. Um, one of the things that I'll emphasize as I go through this, I've provided a lot of information and I encourage readers to do their own research. Um, I am not um, acting as an authority in any way or shape or form. I am simply providing information and I encourage readers to do their own research. Um, so what is, dis what is disturbing about the Department of Homeland Security being set up like this? Uh, DHS was set up after uh, the 9-11 World Trade Center incidents and uh, uh, President George Bush uh, set that up, they set that program up, um, and the system has been thoroughly abused. Um, what we find is there's an entire organization with thousands of employees who show up for work every day with the intent and purpose of torturing people. Um, that is a felony in the United States federal laws, in federal code. And I have pointed out um, a number of those laws that are in serious violation in a letter that was written by myself and with the help of others um, in the targeted justice community and from the Houston uh, TI meetup group uh, that meets once a month. So we, there are many of us have signed that letter. We've included the communities uh, of some large organizations in that. So the letter that you find on my website, which has also been uh, printed and published on a number of other websites, uh, contains what we sent via certified mail to the Department of Homeland Security demanding that they stop these uh, illegal operations. And we've quoted chapter and verse right out of the uh, United States Code, uh, the laws that accompany that. So uh, if, if we could see that first slide, um, so that slide, I, I believe, is a, a cover image of, of the ebook, The Governors of Gang Stalking. Uh, it is available for free on my website, uh, as well as a number of websites. You can uh, search for it. Uh, and part of the emphasis on that book is how we were able to identify these two top executives at the Department of Homeland Security. And we did that through the brave efforts of three police whistleblowers who in 2018 individually came forward 
on a talk show, and uh, I even spoke to one of them on, on the phone for about 45 minutes, and they described that the fusion centers in the United States are used for um, um, control stations for gang stalking. Um, every state in the United States has a primary fusion center, and, and uh, a number of states have uh, secondary centers as well. For example, here in Texas, we have the primary fusion center in Austin, and then we have secondary centers, one in Houston, one in Dallas, and I believe one in San Antonio. And all of these fusion centers coordinate together with the Department of Homeland Security. They're provided um, training, they're provided key personnel, they're provided uh, grant money, um, they're provided database, software, contact lists, uh, they're given they're given policies and procedures and told you must follow these policies and procedures or you're not going to get your grant money every year. So basically, um, the DHS has set this up deliberately so that they can pretend that these fusion centers are private organizations and therefore not subject to freedom of information requests. That's the reason they went to these great lengths with the fusion centers to keep them separate uh, in theory from the uh, uh, the federal government or from state and local governments, but all of the employees are on federal or state government payrolls. So there is a way to get FOIA requests in. You're going to have to retrieve it through the the organizations that support the fusion centers, such as uh, directly through DHS in Houston. You could request those documents through the the city of Houston or the um, Houston Police Department that contribute employees and time and effort to that fusion center. So there's there's other ways to get to uh, get to the fusion center and the information that they contain. But uh, the emphasis I wanted to make there is that three um, wh police whistleblowers came forward and told us that the gang stalking was coordinated and controlled through these fusion centers. Um, what I did then was do some research online to find out who was funding it. And so the, the, the key statement or phrase I want to give here is follow the money. And I encourage other researchers to do the same thing. Follow the money. Where's the funding coming from and who benefits? So that makes a lot of sense. If you, uh, It was very quickly in the searches that I did, it became apparent that uh, the Department of Homeland Security's Intelligence and Analysis Office were the folks that were providing the funding in the direction and the key personnel to all the fusion centers. And the funds above them come down from the Director of National Intelligence, the DNI. Now, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence is a very large program. Um, these folks basically run all 17 of the intelligence agencies in the U.S. government. Um, so that funding, uh, if you go to the, the DNI.gov website, you'll see statements that they have made that they provide 100% of the funding that goes to uh, the Department of the, uh, the DHS Intelligence and Analysis Group, who then provide funds uh, and funding and grant money to these fusion centers. So we have a direct link um, tracing from these fusion centers to uh, DHS Intelligence and Analysis Office and the DNI. That's very important. Um, later on, I will discuss how targeted individuals are tracked through these offices and how the FBI is involved. Um, that, that also is very important because it helps us identify key personnel that are involved. We, we, we want to identify the people, not just the organizations. Um, these are organizations are deliberately secretive, and we've got to be smarter than they are to uncover them and unmask them. So I'm, I'm encouraging other researchers out there uh, to do their own homework and look into these organizations. The National Counterterrorism Center, um, run under the DNI.gov uh, organization, is, is clearly involved. They are the ones who identify and um, put on what's called the TIDE database. They are the ones that list and control the international targeted individuals. So TIs that are located in Europe, Asia, and Africa, all of that is run through the National Counterterrorism Center. And the person that, that is the director of that center is a man named Joseph McGuire. He's the director. He is culpable. 
He is fully responsible for his actions and the, the, the actions that are happening in his organization. And that's somebody we want to keep in mind. So there's, there's two significant databases that affect targeted individuals worldwide. There's a database that is run within the United States that's called the Terror Screening Center. And that's run, um, uh, that's run uh, here in the United States. And I forget the gentleman's name right off the top of my head, but uh, uh, Cable, it starts with a K. His last name is Cable. And um, he is the director of the Terror Screening Center. They are the ones that identify and help select targeted individuals in the United States. And that goes into a, a database called the Terror Screening Database that is loosely called the Terror Watch List. So there's, there's the, the point I'm trying to make here is there's a number of feed boxes that flow into what people know as the Terror Watch List. Um, and uh, I think you'll see on the screen now a diagram of um, a targeted individual. And I will admit there's some minor errors on here, and I will correct those soon. But it gives you a general outline or a general flow of what a targeted individual is and what, what they encounter in their daily lives. Um, starting from the left side of this diagram, you'll see I'm, I'm showing a random person, and these people are nominated by the CIA, the FBI, the DHS, um, other government agencies, and it, it, unfortunately, it can even be random. Many times it involves uh, particular activities such as a, a whistleblower within a government agency or a political activist. Um, other people that we know have been targeted are labor union leaders and scientists that won't tow the government line. So what we're finding is there's, there's a broad-based diversity and background to these folks that are being selected for this. But the first thing they do is that here in the United States, they put them on the FBI's um, terror screening center uh, database. And uh, from there, that, that, uh, that feeds into other databases and, and allows, it, it eventually goes to Interpol and uh, NATO and a number of other organizations internationally. But the first step is uh, the individual's name is, is entered through the FBI onto the terror watch list. And there's a number of phases. Nothing happens right away. Um, the CIA gets involved. Their division called Psychological Operations gets involved to identify key family members that are part of the person's uh, support group. It's generally family members, but it could be friends. Um, and those, those are the people that they target to manipulate. And I won't go into too much detail on that, but I think uh, most TIs will know what I'm talking about. The, the folks that set that up and design that are the CIA in Denver, and they've got a group called PSYOPs, or Psychological Operations. They are the ones that figure out which of your family members are your support team, your support group, and they're the ones that they go after with the, uh, the microwave manipulation and the mind manipulation that was learned through MKUltra. So the next step, without getting into too much detail, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly cover this. You'll see how this information feeds to the fusion center. And soon after, the individual begins to experience gang stalking and the breakdown of their family relationships. And it's, it's very disturbing on a number of levels. It does meet the definition of psychological torture under the Geneva Conventions. That's, that's very important for legal matters and lawsuits. Under Article 32 of the Geneva Conventions, psychological torture is a war crime and punishable by up to and including the death penalty. So that's how serious it is. So the folks in the CIA and the FBI and the DHS that are involved, they can be brought be before uh, the International Criminal Car Court and charged with war crimes. It is a, it's a felony offense here in the United States and a war crime punishable by the death penalty. Very, very serious. Um, from the Fusion Center, the Air Force Space Command, which is headed by General John Raymond, gets involved. These folks are located mostly at Schriever Air Force Base. Uh, they control more than 175 satellites in orbit. The most, uh, or, or all of those satellites have weapons on board. Um, the most important satellite constellation group that they use is called the NAVSTAR system, the NAVSTAR GPS system. That's used for tracking you. 
And I've got a separate diagram that we'll show in, in a bit to show how that particular satellite system works and the Air Force Space Command uses it to track everyone. Very important emphasis here. Not just targeted individuals, everyone in the United States is currently being tracked by a satellite constellation group called NAVSTAR. These are very high-speed computers. The latest generation has eight antennas. It can track, according to my best estimates, about 800 million people at once from one satellite. Amazing feat of engineering, all done through the Air Force Space Command uh, near Colorado Springs. So the weapons that are involved, one of them is called a Vercator. Uh, this, again, is also fairly recent information. Um, for more than 30 years now, TIs have been uh, experiencing these satellite microwave attacks, and Harlan Gerard in Philadelphia is one of the first folks to identify it and say specifically, this is coming from a satellite. And uh, the weapon is called a Vercator. It was first launched in 1987, um, and it's, called, it's part of what's called the Thunderbolt system. It was manufactured by a company called Titan Corporation in San Leandro, California. It has since been acquired by a company called L3 Technologies. I encourage those that want to research that to look it up. So uh, some of the other technologies that are involved include the cell tower system uh, that's operated by a number of cell tower companies, um, Verizon, AT&T, uh, Sprint, T-Mobile, they're all involved. They've all got their own cell towers and Every time I have tracked, every time I've gone to a new city, um, I have determined that any operational cell tower, every single operational cell tower is emitting microwave pulses at your head 24 hours a day. So any cell tower that's roughly within about two miles of you is trying to hit you with microwave bullets. And this is literally, it's very important. Everyone is being tracked and hit with these microwave uh, pulse technologies not just targeted individuals. The other way of looking at that is to say that everyone in the United States is a targeted individual. They're simply not aware of it. Most of them are just not aware of it. Um, so unfortunately, um, this is something that we're gonna have to deal with. It's not just a small group that's complaining about this. This affects everywhere. The microwaves cause brain damage. We know that from the Cuban diplomat situation. Um, the, it causes white matter deterioration in the brain. It, uh, it symptomatically looks like a concussion. It is very serious. It causes short-term memory loss. The microwaves also cause uh, difficulty concentrating. And this is traced to the depletion of calcium that occurs in the brain uh, with these intense microwave attacks. So very important that the Cuban diplomats and, and the, the diplomats that just returned from China are experiencing the same thing. They are targeted individuals in every sense of the word. They are getting gang stalked at their homes and houses, and the mainstream media is refusing to acknowledge or publish that. They do have an attorney representing them. His name is Mark Zaid, Z-A-I-D, and uh, he has a law firm, I believe, in uh, Washington, D.C., and a uh, very capable, uh, astute uh, attorney that is working to help um, these uh, diplomats. And again, they are targeted individuals in every sense of the word. Uh, unfortunately, the State Department has worked closely with the CIA and has put a um, gag order on their own employees. They are not allowed to speak to the press about it. In the one instance where we saw Catherine Werner, mother come forward, Catherine yes. Werner herself is under gag order and was told not to communicate with the media. So the only reason the State Department would do this is because they're culpable. They're fully aware. Mike Pompeo is former CIA director. He knows about the program. He knows what it is. And here he is at the State Department trying to cover it up. So uh, I, I can't say enough negative words about that, but I won't go into it. Um, you and me just, both. And one, one of the things that we find, it's the same thing when, when, when one of the people, after they go to their church or they go to their after when they go to one of their places in uh, the communities and they find that they uh, 
after they go to the uh, from their churches and explain to one of their ministers, or they go to a psychiatric uh, 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 place that they were given to, to go talk to these people. They are uh, they are given the California wave. I I know you've probably heard of the expression the California wave, where they're given a 1370 or a 5150 diagnose, and that being the same type of thing that these fusion centers working closely uh, uh, with all parts of the different parts of the community. Yeah, I, I, I agree. There, there's there's a, a huge complicity with the mental health community and the doctors that are involved there. They are fully aware of go, what's going on and they actively contribute to cover it up, which is despicable on so many levels. Um, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll save that detail for, for a, a, a different conversation, but it, I, I'm glad that you did bring that up. The, the, mental, the, the mental health community is seriously involved in this and, and certainly part of the cover-up. Um, well, just look at, I, just look at how, many, how many people in the past have gone to and talked uh, and brought the things up in, the, in, in following the Cuban and Havana and China scenario is following that you're basically reading and, and you know TIs are looking picking through every single message and you're seeing that the information that they get is a pure sign of being a targeted individual and they continue to uh, uh, grow the story this way or they grow the story that way or they they take out a little of this or they say that even the sonic weapons or microwave weapons that are being used from either the towers or the satellite or a voice to skull are uh, we know that they've been in existence for years, but they continue to uh, make the story compatible so they can basically turn it into nothing. That's what they want to do. They want to wear it. They want to grind it and turn it into nothing. And thank you for continuing your, your uh, it's such a blessing to know that you've, you're using the Cuban and the China uh, information in your story today. Thank you. I'll let you go back. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely agree, Wayne, that, that, and that's helpful. Um, so I did mention uh, uh, that the CIA developed this uh, uh, psychological and physical torture program through the MK Ultra. It grew out of the MK Ultra program. Um, there's a great deal of historical information that can be found, and many books have been published. Uh, Dr. Colin Ross in Dallas is a psychiatrist that uh, published a book called The CIA Doctors, where he details it in great length, uh, some of the real horrifying aspects of the experimental research that was done by some of these CIA doctors, with the goal being how to control the mind or how to uh, uh, manipulate it to where uh, the person has no control uh, uh, of their own senses and, and self-being. So uh, for folks that are interested, I encourage you to research that and, and, and look it up. Um, so. If I can, I'll talk a little bit more about the Air Force Space Command. And I do have a diagram that goes with this. Um, again, this is primarily done out of Schriever Air Force Base. One of the first people to identify the uh, top secret nature and the corruption uh, that is occurring at Schriever Air Force Base under the Air Force Space Command is a, a, a doctor by the name of Bill Deagle, Dr. Bill Deagle. And he was there during the 1990s. He's done a number of interviews uh, on it. Uh, I encourage you to look those up. There's a very important five-minute interview that he did where he summarized his experiences at Schriever Air Force Base. And one of the things that he brought out was, uh, in, in addition to all the classified and top secret work going on, they've got a supercomputer there at Schriever Air Force Base. In my exposures, um, I have been in underground cities. I have worked for the Iridium Satellite Project. I've been on the, uh, the doctor for U.S. Space Command, Strategic Defense, the Echelon Project, and the World Identification. And I've taken care of people that have been in the most classified facilities on the planet in Colorado. And Colorado has more classified material underground there and more computing power, quantum computing, than all the rest of the planet to get, uh, put together by a very large order of magnitude. And most of these facilities are in underground cities. And I was in one of them, and it was very impressive. Um, that computer and its upgrades still exist at Schriever Air Force Base, which is a, a primarily an underground base, a deep underground base. Uh, and there are tunnels that extended over into the Cheyenne Mountain Complex, where 
during a nuclear confrontation, all the employees would be evacuated. So they've got a primary system at Schriever Air Force Base and a backup system in the Cheyenne Mountain complex. Uh, like very Iron important. Mountain, like Iron Mountain, is it is it is it something like the Iron Mountain? Well, this this particular complex is called the Cheyenne Mountain complex. Cheyenne Mountain, okay. And, it, all and right. it's all underground. It's it's uh, just goodness. a short trip away. The Cheyenne Mountain Underground Complex has been there since I believe about the 1950s, and uh, it has been upgraded and renovated many times, and it's there for primarily for the military. Uh, um, crews to move to in the event of a, a nuclear emergency. But they're all connected by underground tunnels. They don't need to use surface roads to get to it. Uh, all, there's, a, there's a giant network of underground tunnels uh, in the Denver and Colorado Springs area, including uh, the primary CIA offices for their domestic headquarters. And I'm going to keep picking at the CIA because they are the folks that set up and fund this entire program. You know, and I know there's a lot of folks, I get calls and emails from people all over the world insisting that um, there are other individuals or other small groups that are running the show, and, and I have no evidence to support that. We, we have a great deal of evidence that suggests that the CIA's domestic headquarters in Denver it runs the entire show and provides the funding for it. Uh, for on the gang stalking side, they provide the funding through a black budget that feeds into the director of national intelligence. And that money and funding and, and programs make it way to uh, the terrorist screening center at the FBI and to the Department of Homeland Security where uh, the gang stalking operations are run. Uh, they also provide the billions of dollars that go into these sophisticated satellite systems that are operated out of Schriever Air Force Base. So I, I want to emphasize that this is primarily a CIA program and they are running it. They call the shots. Um, there is a, on the political side, a, a, an organization called the Council on Foreign Relations that was founded by David Rockefeller, who passed away last year. Um, there are many videos. I won't try to go into the details on this, but I will encourage you to look up the basics of the Council on Foreign Relations, CFR.org. There are four people at the top of this organization um, that work closely with the CIA, and their goal, unfortunately, is to get control of the United States government and its population. It is one of the most disturbing, um, mind-boggling ideas. It's, it's difficult to believe that anyone would take on something like this, but it's, it, they've been doing this, been in the works for almost 100 years, um, and there's, there's a long history that goes with it. I encourage folks to look it up. Uh, it is closely connected to the forming of the Federal Reserve um, in 1915, approximately. The Federal Reserve had both the Rockefellers and Rothschilds and a number of other wealthy families involved. Uh, it is connected to the founding of the United Nations. David Rockefeller provided the land for the building of the first United Nations building. It is connected with that as well. Um, so folks that are interested, I encourage you to go out and do the, the research on that. Let me talk a little bit about gang stalking because there's going to be uh, listeners uh, uh, and viewers that, that are not familiar with that term and don't really understand what it means. Initially, uh, this, this is an idea, a psychological torture method that developed, that was developed by the Stasi, the secret police over in Germany, uh, both during and after World War II. Um, the Stasi had a very nasty reputation for harassing, brutalizing, murdering, and making people disappear. And to this day, you'll find that German citizens, I've traveled to Germany many times, German citizens are particularly sensitive about their privacy rights, and primarily due to the ones who went through and experienced that Stasi period in the 1940s and 1950s. And uh, uh, very difficult for Americans to comprehend because we just haven't seen anything like that yet. But targeted individuals here in the United States know what I'm talking about. Um, the almost daily break-ins of your household. Um, things can be stolen. Um, chairs will be moved around just so that you'll know that they've been there. Um, your valuable items, things that might be family memorabilia will be stolen. Um, 
it's it's very unnerving to come home and find that your house has been broken in and um, TIs are reluctant to report it because the police are going to take your file and trash it or make it disappear and they'll mock you. And, and I've had this I've had this reported to me by a number of targeted individuals just in the last year. They're afraid to report it to police, but the thing we need to emphasize is there's always a way to report it and document it. I, I encourage folks, if your house is getting broken in, the best way to make it stop is report it. Um, you don't have to file a police report by going to a police station. There's lots of opportunities to send an email to the police chief or one of the captains in, in the local police department or the sheriff's office. There are email addresses online. Fill out all the information, get pictures if you want, attach it and send the email. And now you've got proof that you told them. You've got proof that you said, I reported this crime. And when it happens again, you can say, I'm reporting this crime again. And to build up that document database so when you do have your day in court, you've got something to back it up. Because the first thing the judge is going to ask you is, did you report these crimes? So I encourage folks to document, 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 and report it where you can. Um, it, it doesn't have to be petty. If you've got something minor that, that might be missing, uh, I, I wouldn't suggest that. But if, if you get uh, valuables that are stolen and things like that, then certainly you should report it. That, that would be what a reasonable person would do anyway. So... I encourage folks to report uh, the break-ins, to report the harassment. You can do it. You don't have to do it in person. You can do it by email. There's generally forms. Some, most of the major cities have a form you can fill out online at, at, for the police department or the sheriff's office. Use them. Um, let me cover some of the, the uh, uh, slides on the directed energy weapons. I, I've got a number of slides uh, talking about the Vercator. The Vercator was patented. Um, in 19, the patent was filed, I believe, in 1982, uh, and the patent was granted in 1983 to a man named Donald J. Sullivan, and he worked for a research, small research uh, facility in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, uh, that has been, since been acquired by um, uh, a, a company called ATK, and uh, there is a long history there of top secret research going on, all involved microwave weapons. Um, the Titan Corporation picked up a lot of that because they became the production facility for these Vercator weapons. And now today, L3 Technologies uses that facility to promote their uh, microwave weapons and capabilities. Um, excuse me, all the, all the, tr the high-speed triggers, for example, that go with these devices that can be used for other purposes. But the microwave weapons is just one generation of the weapons that are available to the Air Force Space Command at Shriver Air Force Base. We have a number of social media profiles where uh, Air Force personnel have told us there are nine different weapon systems mounted on satellites in, in orbit. Nine different weapon systems. Some of these weapons can be considered weapons of mass destruction. That, that is a very important term that can be used to explain how the United States is violating the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. Very important. Um, I wrote a, a short ebook on it documenting the places where the 1967 Outer Space Treaty was being violated. And I made certain that a number of countries, there are a number of consulates here in the Houston area, and I went out of my way to make sure many of those consulates received that information and they were aware that the United States government was violating its treaty commitments. And who was doing it? So that's something that folks can do in some of these bigger cities in Chicago, New York, and LA. There, there are foreign consulates that are available. Get them some of this information. Tell them what's going on because their own government employees are being affected by this in their own countries. And because of satellites be, weapons being used, there's no one that they can go arrest because the, the rest are beyond the authority of the local uh, police and um, uh, policing officials. Even though they may be aware of what it is, there's, there's nobody that's operating that system within the borders of their country. It, it, it needs to be made clear that these weapons are operated from one location, Shriver Air Force Base. So um, that should be very helpful to some of our international TI folks. And, um, and I, I also believe that with that information you just gave us, uh, that they'll be able to make go to their town hall meetings and like Richmond, California did, 
and basically bring it to their councils or their town hall meetings in their community. And hey, if there's other TIs in, uh, say, St. Helena or, say, Santa Rosa, well, we know in Santa Rosa there's probably thousands and thousands. They could take that information and petition that satellite uh, information that you just gave to tell them that they want to be a protected city in that, in that town to, for, for them to, to make the law to be protected uh, from our government so that uh, that, that satellite law will be protecting not being used against the people in its own community. Isn't that true? That you, that's true. There are a number of, uh, I believe the state of Michigan and the state of Maine have passed laws um, regarding the use of directed energy weapons. Um, unfortunately, that hasn't it hasn't resulted in, in any reduction in the use of those weapons. I think at least primarily they can do it. They you know, at least, at least they can do it for right off the bat. You know, they can do it. You know, a absolutely. I, I, I would encourage um, city councils to pursue that. Pass laws that restrict, uh, make it, make it serious crime. Gang stalking is a serious crime. Make it a local crime as well. Um, uh, identify how it can be tracked and how people can file special reports. Uh, we now know where the satellites are being controlled. Um, we can certainly they're sue. Over. <laughs> <laughs> they they are overhead, and um, uh, one of the one of the slides I want to show in just a minute is one that anyone can pull up. It's at a website that's called In the Sky, with a with a hyphen in between it, in hyphen the hyphen sky dot org, and they have a satellite map that anyone can pull up that shows the GPS tracking site satellites that are called Navstar. It's the very first group of satellites that shows up on the map, and anyone can, can pull up this map uh, at this website, and, li and it will show you live, real time, where the GPS satellites are overhead that are tracking you and hitting you with these microwave pulses. So I, I encourage folks to look that up. And this is not the only website where you can do that. Uh, there's another one called N2YO, uh, dot com that also has live satellite tracking maps for these NASTAR satellites. So um, uh, the diagram that uh, you just pulled up is very helpful because it describes in very simple terms. Now, it doesn't cover everything. I've had a number of folks tell me, well, what about this and what about this? You know, they can also send the, uh, uh, the, the program back up to the satellite. It doesn't have to go through a cell tower, and that's correct. There are many ways to deliver that uh, microwave pulse, but the, one of the emphasis that you get out of this diagram that it's all controlled from Schriever Air Force Base. There's a supercomputer there that allows them to take the precise GPS coordinates that are attained via the speed of light uh, and bounced off of a person's head. They can then direct specific subliminal messages at that same person. And it, and it transits from second to second wherever they're at. It can be sent through a cell tower or it can be sent back through the satellite system and they can be attacked with subliminal messages from a satellite rather than the cell towers. So there is some flexibility in the, the, the system in the way that it's designed. It is clear that the majority of the targeting that's done um, is from the ground through the cell towers. Um, it, primarily because it's far less expensive than building additional satellites. Um, sort, of the, the like satellite the, sort of like the movie Enemy of the State then, huh? Sort of like the movie Enemy of the State? Very much so, very much so. There was some technology, I've seen that movie. It's, it does represent how quickly the government can identify and locate and track people on the ground. And in fact, it's, it's even faster than, than what they demonstrate in that movie. It, it's, it's the speed of light, and it goes from one second to the next. They know they already know where you are, exactly where you are at any second of the day. Um, I explained in a previous video that um, I was at Home Depot a, a couple of months ago, and I was talking to some of the um, some of the uh, men, the work crews that wait outside of Home Depot, and some of them have come here from Central America, and they're just looking for work, and one of the things I asked two of these guys, I said, put your hand on the top of your head, on the top back part of your head, and I showed him where, and he immediately said to me, what is that? And you can feel the microwave pulses. So these guys had only been in the United States 
uh, for a few weeks, and yet they were already being actively tracked. And it's quite likely that they were actively tracked from uh, their home in Central America. So what is clear is that everyone is being tracked. Everyone in the United States is being tracked. Uh, even people that have recently arrived in the United States are being tracked. Um, a lot of that now, here's something that you might not figure. The Air Force Space Command does not share a lot of the details of the technology in their program with the Department of Homeland Security. Okay? They, they work within a silo. These groups work within a silo uh, some of the time because all of the information they handle is top secret. And it's called uh, secure compartmentalized information. That means it must stay within the silo. So even though, uh, even though the Air Force Space Command knows your exact location at any given second, the, the gang stalkers may lose track of you following you around the neighborhood they won't know to call the Air Force Space Command and get your exact coordinates because they're, they don't have immediate access to that information sometimes. And they certainly are not aware of the fact that they too are being tracked and hit with microwave pulses. That's the, that's the irony of the situation is that FBI agents, DHS agents, um, all of these gang stalkers are being hit and tracked with the exact same microwave weapons and they're not even aware of it. But if they knew that it caused brain damage, they might be less willing to work for the DHS or the FBI to commit these crimes. But interesting enough, I hope that this information gets out to them and discourages them from continuing to, to do these gang stalking programs. We will see. You know, um, one of the things one of the things is is that you and I both know is that when a person's trying to tell somebody about they are being targeted and the, the, the towers and the satellites are being used to, and sometimes line of sight, whether it be neighbors or a car or a van, you know, somebody, somebody's working with one of the fusion centers. You have the mindset and understanding that the, the, uh, the radiation that comes from these technologies makes it hard for the people that you're trying to tell to basically uh, comprehend and want to be involved and even grasp without denying. Everyone knows that when you're going in for radiation treatments, you, you're in complete denial. Your body is rejecting the, the radiation, is rejecting the treatments, it's fighting it. So it, why can't people be more, maybe through the, the video that you're talking about here, people will be more understanding after sharing this video and this DVDs with others, they'll understand that it's the radiation that's making them uh, deny and reject wanting to help and listen to other targeted individuals. What do you say about that? Oh, I, I, I say that's absolutely correct, uh, Wayne. Um, there, there, there are so many complexities of, of this program and the targeting and the gang stalking. Uh, we're, we're just covering kind of a surface level here today, but it, it's, it's, it's slightly different for every person. We're able to see that um, the CIA uh, and the gang stalking program is different for each person, but it does seem to be maybe a dozen different categories. So there's some folks that only get gang stalking, and that there's some folks that get very intense directed energy weapons with very intense gang stalking. And uh, uh, the V2K, which is psychologically destroying, I, I have so much sympathy for folks that are going through that. Very disturbing. Uh, it is true psychological torture, and, and one of the main reasons we've got to stop this program. But you bring up a good point. There are many, many complexities to this. We're just covering a, a kind of a, a brief overline today, and these diagrams that I'm presenting can't give you all of the details on, on one page. But it does give you a starting point where you can do more research. And there's people such as yourself, Wayne, that are in the community that are, are actively outreaching to community members, trying to answer their questions, trying to get them uh, both medical help and emotional support. And we want to encourage that 110 percent because uh, uh, we're going to see more and more t new TIs this year. Um, uh, that During that first three to six month period, it's very difficult. It's, it's traumatic in so many ways. And we really need to have a, a system or systems in place to try to help these folks because unfortunately that's when we see the suicides is when we get um, people that feel so hopeless and lost and they've lost all of their emotional support groups from family and friends 
and uh, it's 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 something that we can prevent. It's, it is preventable. But you bring up a good point. Well, you know, so, uh, one of the things is is I do want you to I want you to uh, think about not only coming back on again, but I want you to think in the future. If I were to be able to set up an open forum dialogue with you, you remember the first thing you mentioned was Bob Fletcher. Now I've I've done shows with Bob Fletcher personally, so I've had him on for more than two hours, and he is the bee's knees when it comes to these technologies and the understandings of how the government works. Like you said, he goes back so deep in the understanding of exposing these. He sat at the Senate and give the Senate. Uh, 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 information on the things that he was told and asked to do for certain Senate members himself. So uh, I'd like to someday have you, well, Bob is still I I I um, act, being active as much as he can. You know, he slowed down with Mary. Let's all say a prayer for him and Mary. Let's all say a prayer and thank him for this 2019, for him to have the strength and energy to continue. I'd like to have Bob Fletcher, you, uh, uh, Scott Hensler, who's worked with Motorola, and, and, and Karen Stewart. You know, you've had dialogue with Karen Stewart, uh, who's a whistleblower from the NSA. And I'd like to have uh, th those four, four members and yourself, you know, four people on an open form like panel where people will be able to type in their questions to you and put it up and we'll be able, you'll be able to answer and have like an open door form dialogue. That would be something in the future if we had to rent like a Ramada or something to do in the future. Maybe we will, I'll be able to think of something, but I'd like to also be able to invite you back. This is just a small taste and I'd like you to be able to come back and use this podium as much as you like. So I really thank you for all the things that you've brought up today. And if there's anything you want to continue to talk about, please, please, we got, we have more time. So. Okay. Yeah. I, I would like to, to touch on a, a couple of key things. Uh, we have sent demand letters, uh, which are basically cease and desist letters to General Raymond at the Air Force Space Command in Colorado Springs. We sent a cease and desist letter to the Department of Homeland Security and copied as many of the co-workers and employees on it so that they are all aware of what's going on. We're hoping that that information will get out and that, that it will uh, at least begin to discourage a lot of what's going on. Uh, I, again, want to encourage folks to download uh, my free eBooks. There's a lot of good information there rlighthouse.com. I'd like to encourage folks to join the class action lawsuit at targetedjustice.com. Uh, there, is, there is a way to uh, sign up for that. There is no obligation or commitment on your part. Um, they just need to, to, to answer a few questions and identify yourself. And uh, uh, the, the team there will get back to you after they are able to better organize some of the legal issues. But it is a mountain of legal research that is going into this effort. Um, people, I hope that folks will understand the, the, the complexity of this case and the, the standard of evidence that has to be raised and maintained and the mountain, mountain of research that has to be done to support it. So uh, we need your help, support, and donations. I also want to encourage folks to visit the other really good websites out there, Freedom for Targeted Individuals, PAX International. Uh, there's a number of organizations that have started recently, uh, both here in the United States and internationally as well. Uh, one of my favorites here in the United States is also um, Frank over at Targeted Massachusetts. A outstanding forum that they run uh, every week, very helpful. If you're a new TI, get online and join in to uh, Frank and Ella Free's uh, weekly conference calls. You'll get a lot of support. You'll get a lot of answers. Uh, very helpful. PAX also is a good source of the conference calls. If you go to their website, uh, you can get more information there. One of the things I want the men and women to understand is, uh, like you said, not all targeting is the same. So my website, Conspiracy Network, TV has a, a vast of information. Uh, and I don't know if you've looked at it, but it basically has the uh, evidences and proof on how they can uh, uh, participate on using those uh, uh, ways that they can contact and 
be supportive, uh, using support groups with each other to uh, make our, our lives easier. So I wanted to make sure that that was brought up here at, the, at this, at this uh, video to, uh, because a, a lot of times, like you said, there's voice to skull, and then there's the people that are having the, the uh, gassing in the street theater that's going on, and then there's more as we go along. There's people that are categorized as you know certain types of whistleblowers that certain groups hate more than other groups of people, you know, and that's one of the things that we really need to start really being aware of because, uh, but, but we want to do it in a kind and loving and and, and, and kind way. So thank you on that. <laughs> thank you, Wayne. And uh, uh, I, I could probably wrap up by saying, I just, I hope folks can uh, um, visit the websites, uh, download the free information. There's lots of information on targetedjustice.com and mine, rlighthouse.com. And I very much appreciate uh, your, your help and efforts to put this uh, show together. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. And, and like I said, I'd really like you to come back a, a, few, a, n a number of more times, you know, to make this place, you know, let's do a part two, you know, L give me the heads up that you want to do a part two, you know? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely, Wayne. Love all to right. do it. So we'll, we'll, so we'll do a part two then. And thank you for today and thank you for all my viewers. And please make DVDs and share. Go to Go, to, go in front of theaters, go in front of places, of uh, malls that are having posters that talk about technologies and scenarios, Wi-Fi, uh, in front of uh, 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 Air, uh, Horizon, in front of uh, AT&T, and hand these DVDs and these pamphlets out. Thank you, and, and God bless you.